he commences that destiny. Okay, so uh, true freedom requires a true present, which is always the peak of destiny. The present is always uh, what we have been destined for all along, if we understand the world in terms of destiny. Right? However, in this present moment, which is the culmination of destiny, that destiny, if it is going to extend further into the future, must be, in this present moment, freely chosen, right? recommenced. I have the freedom to choose to recommence this destiny. And in choosing to continue this destiny, I affirm the past. And it's in uh, affirming my future that I affirm my past. If I do not recommence that destiny in this present moment, if I choose a different uh, future, a different destiny in this present moment, then I can also uh, change what the past means. And that's how I'm able to have some control over the past. He goes on, Judaism bears this magnificent message. Remorse, the painful expression of a radical powerlessness to redeem uh, the irreparable, heralds the repentance that generates the pardon that redeems. Woof. Uh, remorse, painful expression of powerlessness to redeem what can't be repaired, the past, heralds the repentance that generates the pardon that redeems. It's an expression of powerlessness to redeem the past is repentance. In my present repentance, I choose to recommence my destiny and in this repentance, uh, in this remorse for the past expressed through repentance, I right, generate a pardon for my past. I'm able to change that past uh, by finding redemption, right? I can be redeemed. What has happened in the past can't be changed, but I can be redeemed. And in being redeemed, that past will be changed, but only if I, in the present moment, Repent for the past, and repentance means choosing a destiny. He goes on. Man finds something in the present with which he can modify or efface the past. So in the absolute freedom of the present, he goes on. Time loses its very irreversibility. I can make up for the past, change the past through my present repentance, which is a projection of a destiny into the future. It collapses at the feet of man like a wounded beast, and he frees it. Right, This absolute freedom that I have in the moment is 
uh, a freedom that collapses time. Everything exists in the moment. This is a fascinating idea. Uh, so the present is the peak of destiny, and in each moment we have freedom to affirm and control that destiny. In that moment of controlling destiny, we have some control over that which is beyond our control, the past. And this, he thinks, is not just uh, the message of Judaism, but is also continued in Christianity. He says, the cross sets one free. And through the Eucharist, which triumphs over time, this emancipation takes place every day. Right? Uh, the salvation that Christianity wishes to bring us lies uh, in the way it promises to reopen the finality brought about by the flow of moments of a past that is forever challenged, forever called into question. Uh, so religion is a way of, in some sense, controlling the past, taking responsibility for it in the present by projecting a future destiny. And this control through religion is traditional. It is civilizational. Uh, it is beyond thought in some sense. And the affirmation of destiny through the freedom of the present in juxtaposition to past and future, this is a moment of wild freedom, not controlled in itself by any destiny and not set in stone as is the past. Uh, so Levinas writes, at any moment in this present, he can regain the nudity he had during the first days of creation. At any present moment, he can regain the nudity, which is to say uh, a kind of return to uh, what in political philosophy might be called the state of nature, uh, a, a state of human being that is uh, outside of civilization, before civilization, um, that is free of any kind of philosophical conditioning or philosophical thinking is free to entirely reimagine destiny. So we can return ourselves uh, to tradition and to uh, the destiny set out by tradition, um, but we also have the freedom to uh, move beyond that or choose an alternative. It, he goes on, on 66, uh, the freedom in Christianity is due to the power given to the soul to free itself from what has been and from everything that linked it to something or engaged it with something so it can regain its first virginity. Now, so uh, virginity, nudity, this uh, return is connected to the idea of the elemental. Right? Uh, freedom is freedom to return to the elemental, to step outside of destiny, uh, to choose, uh, to choose. And this Christian, Judaic idea of freedom, this absolute freedom of the moment, is expressed in liberalism also. Uh, so he says, if the liberalism of these last few centuries evades the dramatic aspects of such a liberation, uh, such freedom, it does retain one of its essential elements in the form of the sovereign freedom of reason. So, uh, where does this absolute freedom uh, lie for liberalism? Uh, not in God, not in religion, but in reason. What collapses time, what is absolute uh, and universal in liberalism, 
not God, but reason. Uh, and so it is an appeal to reason, uh, and through reason, that this freedom gains its efficacy in the present moment. So, on 66, he writes, continuing uh, his discussion with liberalism, it replaces the blind world of common sense with the world rebuilt by idealist philosophy, one that is steeped in reason and subject to reason. In place of liberation through grace, there is autonomy. Right? Uh, we don't get liberation uh, through the grace of God. We get liberation through our own rational autonomy, a la Kant, right? he says. But the Judeo-Christian leitmotif of freedom pervades this auto autonomy. In other words, this Kantian autonomy, the Kantian conception of freedom, uh, though it operates in a different framework, right, an idealist philosophy, an idealist framework, um, it still has the same basic structure. It's a continuation of this tradition. Uh, autonomy is this religious idea of freedom reinstated in the figure of reason. Right? Uh, freedom from the world, freedom from others. Right? This autonomy uh, is based in the self. Uh, we can think of Kant's imperfect duties. Right? Uh, I only have an imperfect duty to the other person. So again, Levinas working against Kant. Now, we see liberalism thus relies on this idea of freedom, uh, and freedom is understood uh, through the reason of an autonomous agent. Liberalism thus is grounded, Levinas thinks, in idealism. Uh, the idealism of Kant, um, the idealism of um, the Enlightenment. And he asks, Levinas does, what remains of materialism when matter has been completely pervaded by reason? This is an interesting observation. What is idealism? Uh, how does idealism grasp the material world? The material world becomes uh, that which is uh, subject to scientific investigation, that which can be uh, understood through scientific concepts. So a scientific worldview, which is connected to liberalism and modernity, is a materialist one in the sense that it values science and science is based on observation and empiricism.